Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Ashley. Duh. And we are here with our very first review slash recap. And the show that we are going to be reviewing is none other than, ding, 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 you guessed it, The Braxtons. So this show was formerly known as Braxton Family Values. This time around, we are missing a very strong key person here in the family, a sister, a friend, a part of the crew, the, the, the singing sister that's going to come in and the, the fertile tree. Uh, uh, you know what I mean? Like that sister with the pizzazz is she is very much so noticeably gone and missed in this first episode of the Braxton's and you know I'm talking about Tracy um this episode is a very serious kind of episode Bef I guess it's, it's gonna start off serious before it gets crazy because you know the Braxton's it's just gonna get crazy at some point <laughs> something's gonna go down you know it's gonna be some drama but um right now they are walking down memory lane, bringing us up to speed to where the girls are today. And I'm just going to say I couldn't be more excited to see them back on TV because I myself can relate to them. I'm sure there's some other people out there that can. But without further ado, let's get into my very first review of The Braxtons. I got me, ain't worried about you. It could have been us, there's nothing more to discuss. Now I'm off to something new, new, something new, new. Let's get into it and let's talk about it, okay? So the episode opens up in a very nostalgic way. It takes you down memory lane and shows you some clips, or should I say montage, of the Braxton family values. And in these clips, um, it's kind of like it's 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 bittersweet because I mean you're happy the show is back but you're so sad because you know that there is a missing piece to this puzzle and it's Tracy so it's just this first episode is a real tearjerker okay so be prepared have your folded napkin so that you can clean the corner of your tear ducts because you will need it this is also the second anniversary of Tracy's passing so of course we know she lost her battle to cancer and so it's 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 a really really sad story but the the episode opens up and it begins marking two days before the family's grief counseling so you know it's showing like okay let's let's rewind to two days before the grief counseling so this is where all the meat and potatoes of the of the episode come in really so they show they show Trina at home she's at her house cooking for her husband Vaughn and then there's some banter going back and forth between her and Vaughn which was actually kind of hilarious because it showed like Trina in her wife mode I mean as we know her to be but it showed her in her wife mode with Vaughn and him just sitting there like you know picking at her and making fun of her and also lifting her up at the same time it just seemed like a really genuine relationship and I wish them well <laughs> Trina says that Tony's going to be planning a dinner at her home because she wants to finally talk about Tracy as a family. And she also has something that she wants to discuss with the family, which is kind of odd because everybody knows that Tony is private. Okay. Tony don't talk about nothing. Okay. So, um, Vaughn also says, you know, well, hey, look on the bright side. At least you guys will all be together. And it's been such a long time since you guys have all seen each other. So, Trini lets him know that it's actually been like three years since the family filmed. And since they really, since then, they really haven't been close. So, everybody's been avoiding the topic of Tracy's death. And so, since in that, she's been feeling alone. She's still close to Wanda, but, you know, she just feels alone. Um, she was telling him again about Tony planning this dinner and um, also saying that she wants to bring up grief counseling. She wants the family to go to grief counseling. She's also saying that she wants little Kevin, which is Tracy's son, to join them in, in grief counseling because, you know, it's a tough time for him and losing his mom and his best friend and his dad. I don't know what's going on with big Kevin, but... 
uh, Big Kevin checked out. And I guess I can understand that being that my mom was a widow. So, I, I mean, she didn't check out on me, but I'm just saying, I guess I can kind of understand. I could put myself in his shoes and be like, wow. But anywho, so, um, yeah, so he's done checked out on his fam lamb, okay? And so, little Kevin is out here feeding for himself. Okay, so they go to commercial. We come back from commercial and the ladies have all arrived at Davio's for dinner. So this is before the dinner at Tony's house. They're having dinner at Davio's in this particular scene. So Miss E begins to talk about missing the girls and how she's excited about doing the show again, which I just know she's so proud of her girls. She loves her girls and she just loves to see them doing things together. Um, she talks about missing Tracy. The girls catch up while waiting for Tawanda. Tawanda's just, she, I don't know what's going on with Tawanda. She's the last one. I don't know. She used to be on time, huh? Anyways, Tony talks about her upcoming Las Vegas show with Cedric the Entertainer and talks about being nervous. So, as we know, she was diagnosed with lupus in 2007 and had to cancel that show. So it's been a while since she's been to Vegas and she's extremely nervous on top of the other news that she has to talk to the family about. So Tony discloses that um, her family knows a couple of months prior that she had to have a stent put in her heart. She hasn't told them the entire story behind the stent because it's on the brink of Tracy's death and she doesn't want to worry her family because her sisters are worriers, especially with everything that they've gone through these past couple or few years. Um, here's something that was funny though. It was so funny because Tamar was like, ah, I miss the California lifestyle. <laughs> and she said, if I see another lemon pepper, she said they could do lemon pepper pedicures if they could. That was hilarious. And that's the banter that we miss. That's the random hilariousness that we miss on TV, like seriously. So Tony says she feels like, you know, she's singly focused on her boys and her work. Not in a place for a relationship right now because, of course, the girls will grill Tony and ask her, who you with, who you mean, what you doing? So she had to let the girls know, I don't have a man. <laughs> Another funny moment was Tamar and that knife chick. Oh, my God. When she put that butter knife up to check her makeup, I was like, okay, catch. I'm going to do that because I never thought to do that. <laughs> it was hilarious. So Tawanda finally walks in wearing the exact same thing as Trina, y'all. And so the joking begins. They're like, what's going on? Y'all playing this. I know y'all playing this. And they're like, no, I haven't talked to her. I haven't seen her in forever. This was not planned. So she then goes and she's like, all right, whatever. You know, it's a little funny moment or whatever. So in this, um, she goes and she, she sits down, of course. And so they show a flashback of funny moments with Tracy with, oh my God, every flashback moment of Tracy. I just didn't know if I wanted to cry or to just like laugh or just do both at the same time. And I'm going to be honest with you. I did the latter. I did both. I cried and I laughed at the same time because when you're such a reality television connoisseur like myself, you get so involved in the storyline. I'm not some crazed fan, but I'm just so into the storylines. I'm into the making of reality tv because i know some people think it's fake but really i believe you know the people do what they do now it's up to them if they want to be real or fake but that's for us as the people to decipher you know but anyways back to the show so um <laughs> back to the flashbacks now hold on let's talk about the flashbacks so they were talking about the songs honey and i know y'all know about the ding -a ling of gold Dear Dog and Fertile Tree. Baby, these was all classics, okay? Okay, they were classics. So the mood switches to them discussing Tracy getting diagnosed with cancer. They talk about her fighting. I mean, this was a serious tearjerker. They want everybody to know that Tracy was a fighter and she did all that she could to continue her journey. 
Um, but Tony breaks down in her confession. Oh my God, this was another hard part to watch because she broke down in her confession. We've never really seen Tony Braxton cry. We've not really seen her cry. She cried a few times in this first episode alone. So I know that this is going to be an emotional season for Tony. I can tell that already. But we are praying for her and we are going to keep her lifted, okay? Because uh, the devil is a lie and we want you to live as long as possible. And we want you to be healthy and here for your kids and be a grandmother to your grandchildren that will be here. Because you got some handsome boys, okay? Now, let's keep it moving. So, at this dinner, um, Tamar says that... The girls need grief counseling. Miss E agrees and says Trina needs to, <laughs> needs it the most. And it's really true because Trina's having a, a tough time here. So they were talking about Tracy's necklace. And there's this necklace where I'm assuming they have some of Tracy's ashes in it. And basically they say that they take it everywhere they go because that was one of her requests. They also talk about the mural of hummingbirds on Tracy's back so they show the portrait of the hummingbirds on her back which there's five and each of the hummingbirds means something so it's like one of the siblings one of her siblings um Tony asks about little Kevin and Tawanda says he's going through a divorce so Tamar says she didn't know about this despite the fact that her and little Kevin frequently meet up and they have dinner from time to time so I don't know why he didn't feel comfortable to tell his aunt or that particular aunt that he and his wife are going through a divorce but we all know Tamar can be a little drum drum okay so maybe he just was like I'll wait until I know for sure before I tell or I get Tamar involved Anywho, so Trina gets emotional and Tawana breaks the silence <laughs> by asking if she was going to eat her cheese. So Trina is sitting there crying and talking and, you know, basically going through it. Tawanda says, you going to eat that cheese, basically, girl. <laughs> so the family starts laughing. And these are the moments that we have missed, I'm telling you. So Trina diverts the conversation to Tony, wondering what she wanted to discuss with them. Because again, like I said, Tony said she wanted to have dinner to tell them something very important. So Tony discusses a very serious health scare where she could have lost her life. Okay. She will eventually need to have bypass surgery, which is a very, very major procedure. She couldn't survive a heart attack if she had one, guys. Not that, it, you know, it's 100%, you know, given that we're all going to survive a heart attack. But because of her illness, the chances of surviving a heart attack is zero. Okay? It's none. And so she's stressed out about this. Um, she said the doctors warned her that she could have a heart attack and she may never be able to perform again. And I know this to be true when you're up there and you're singing and you're doing all this. And let's just say you're trying to dance or whatever. If your heart is weak and you get up there and something goes wrong, then you have a heart attack right there. You will not survive that. Most likely you'll just die right there on stage is what they're trying to tell her. And so that's very, very, very scary. So Tony breaks down in tears and she's saying that it's weighing on her mental. She's worried about her sons and she's worried about it every moment of the day. Like, wow. So until she gets that bypass surgery, this is just the fear that she's having right now. So the family rallies around Tony and offers her words of peace and comfort. She said she's scared every day. And Tawanda breaks the silence again. <laughs> I'm not going to tell y'all everything, but y'all have to watch it. She basically breaks the silence by just being Tawanda. Like, these girls are hilarious. She was saying something to her and she pointed down towards Tony's vagina. And Tony was like, did you just point at my vagina? Girl, stop it. They are so hilarious, okay? <clears throat> when I tell you they remind me of my family, they truly, truly do. It's just really, really nostalgic to see this family back on TV. So anyways, they, you know, break the little laugh and then they keep it pushing. 
So they begin to flash back to them supporting and hugging one another in difficult times. So that's another little, you know, montage of videos from the Braxton Family Values that will give you a serious tearjerker. You will be crying, okay? Tony says she wanted to do a show. Well, she said she wanted to do the show again for Tracy and to bring awareness. Tamar says, you're already living. You can't be afraid to live. That's a powerful message. Okay, that is like so powerful. So Tawanda and Tracy, they meet for lunch and instantly they start joking around. <laughs> like they are just really crazy. And they mention something like the pairs of closeness in their family. How Tony and Tamar were close because they lived in L.A., Trina and Tawanda were close because they lived in Atlanta. And then Michael Jr., who's the brother, and Tracy were very close because they lived in Maryland. So I thought that was quite interesting that the, the closeness, or should I say the pairs of closeness. So Tawanda starts talking about people asking if she's sick because she cut her hair. And the reason why she cut her hair is because of alopecia, you know? Um, so they show a flashback of Tracy rubbing Tawanda's hair. That's another moment. Get ready. I'm telling you, get that folded napkin up. The same one that Candace used when she get the crying on Real Housewives of Potomac. You will need about four of those. Okay. And if you're wearing mascara, if you're wearing eyeliner, if you have on eyelashes, just take it off because you're going to be crying. I'm telling you right now, don't wear it. <laughs> Cause you're gonna be in TS. Okay. I'm telling you. So randomly, Trina asked Tawanda about little Kevin. So she's like, you know, I've been thinking about little Kevin lately. You know, he's on my heart, he's on my mind right now. Let's just go ahead and give him a call. So Tawanda's like, You want me to call him? And she said, Yes. So they give him a call and they ask him who did his hair because his hair looked nice. Now, remind you, he's getting a divorce. He says that his wife is braiding his hair. So the girls are literally gagged. Trina and Tawanda are like, she did what? She's doing your hair. So he's like, I know. I don't know. She don't know if she want to be married or she want to be divorced, child. So they laugh it off and then they begin to ask him about the grief counseling if he would agree to, you know, appear. So he said that he would agree <clears throat> and he, you know, he would love to be a part of it. So the girls finished their lunch. They cheers to each other and they say like Tracy, you know, I think they mentioned this to Tracy or I don't know what they said. I can't really remember. But anyways, they did a cheers at the end. And I like it because they said, I'm not above you. I'm not below you. I'm right here with you. And it was either a cheers to Tracy or it was one of the ch the type of toast that that Tracy would you know typically say whenever she would do her cheers. Um. So after that, they show them at Tony's house. Now this has to be the day where you know they were like two days prior to the grief counseling. This is the grief counseling. Okay, we have arrived to the grief counseling. Okay, now. So they arrive at Tony's house for the grief counseling. Trina and Miss E, they're cooking some of Tracy's favorite food from oxtails, corn brick, mac and cheese, ham hocks, pig belly, pig. I'm just playing. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. But there was some oxtails and some other stuff going on. Um. Oh, and some muffins. I think it was, she said Tracy's favorite muffins. But yeah, something of the sort. So they're in there cooking her favorite food. Tony breaks down in a confessional again. When I tell you, oh, Lord, this is crazy. She then says on the phone to uh, Tawanda because she was asking Tawanda where she was. Tawanda was running late again. Anywho, so she asked Tawanda. She's like, you know, this is something, something about Unbreak My Heart because, you know, she got the song Unbreak My Heart. So she made some corny joke about unbreaking her heart because of this whole um, thing with Tracy, her, she has a broken heart forever or whatever. So they laugh about it over the phone. And then, so Tamar arrives, well, actually Tawanda arrived shortly after the little corny joke over the phone. So then Tamar arrived after that in true Tamar fashion. Oh, 
know, whatever she said when she got to the door. But anywho, so Spirit was there for Trina and Gabe's passing. Now, Spirit is the grief counselor that Trina has invited to do the counseling with the family. So she's used her before back when Gabe passed away. Gabe is Trina's ex-husband. He was also on the Braxton family values. So most of y'all know Gabe. If y'all are listening to this, then you know who Gabe is. So Spirit helped her through that. Um, they show flashbacks of Gabe and another tearjerker. I'm telling y'all, get your napkin. So they show a flashback of Gabe and then of course he died from cancer and so that was pretty um sad to watch. So Tamar is like, where's the Tony Braxton stuff? <laughs> Not this cheap stuff we eating on. So Tony's like, I got a cute little tea a little tea tray somewhere, a tea set somewhere. She just didn't know where because they were in her Atlanta home, which she's bi coastal, she said. Um, so Tamar was like, yeah, give us the expensive stuff. We want the expensive sh Okay. Now, Spirit arrives to the home and the grief counseling begins. Trina introduces Spirit to the family. Daddy Braxton, which is Michael Braxton Jr., I mean Sr., and Lil Kevin joins the session virtually. So they're on the monitors joining the session. Um, Miss E's there. Everybody's there. All the girls are there in the physical form at the house. But like I said, um, Mr. Braxton and little Kevin were joining, or should I say joined the session virtually. They began laughing at her dad's, their dad's shirt because his name was literally a logo on the shirt. Y'all know like the little pocket area where your pocket go. His name was right there. It said Michael Braxton. Literally right there in the pocket area. I was like, oh my God, that is funny. So they just laughed at him. So the counseling session starts and Spirit asks Trina to share first because she was the person that, you know, invited her. So Trina turns down the opportunity to go first because she says she's simply just not ready. And so they talk about the family being nervous and not great communicators. And obviously they flash back again to the Braxton family values, showing all those many times that they tried to do therapy. And every single time it always went bad. They didn't even show a flashback of the therapy with Ayala Van Sant. I watched that one, honey. And that one was a show okay it was real crazy so you know that their family is not really good at getting into a room and really hashing it out in love it usually ends up in hashing it out in punches and not necessarily in the physical form but they go they gonna they gonna do some low blows with some words they gonna say some things and it's gonna hurt it's gonna sting like ow ow like that you know <laughs> So, again, so they're like really nervous and the, the counselor is trying to tell them that this is a no judgment zone and she's really just there to help them. But she reminds them that she can only do what she can do. And, you know, if no one speaks up, she can't help if she can't identify the real problems. So basically the episode ends after that. They show a preview for the episodes to come for the season. And when I tell you, it looks like it's going to be really, really good. It's going to be full of drama because it's the Braxtons. Yes, I do believe we're going to miss Tracy tremendously. Especially because she was the one that wanted this show to keep going. And we remember her trying to keep the show going, okay? The girls was like, we're not showing up. Tracy showed up, okay? And so I'm just happy that they all came together and decided to do this for her, but not only her, for them too, because we want to know what the girls got going on. We want to hear some more singing. We need to see families on TV. We need to see sisters fight and make up because we need to know that this is possible. True love, you know what I mean? Like true real sisters loving on each other and their mom. 
and their dad there. We are really going to miss Tracy, but this family is vital to reality TV. And I myself could not be any happier to see them back on TV. So thanks for listening to this review. Please like and subscribe to my channel. There's going to be so much more to come. Um, hopefully y'all have videos with my actual face. I told myself if I didn't get this, if I didn't do this inaugural review for myself, I'd never do it. So I want to thank each and every one of you who do, does take the time out to hit that like button, who does take the time out to play, review or share, comment, whatever it is that you want to do. So thank you for the support. Thank you for the love. And um, I will see you soon. Once again, it's Ashley. Duh.